Hello Hillcrest, looks like we're on our second week of our shutdown and sequester in our homes. Uh, today I wanted to talk about a relatively short verse. Uh, today, looking at Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, just that first verse, uh, and let me read it for us. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. So this is a simple but a very powerful verse as it speaks to us in, in a way that, that Scripture usually doesn't do. It, it's defining something for us. Scripture doesn't re regularly give us these kinds of definitions. Now, it, it, it's, not a, it's not a dictionary type definition because faith is more than just this. Um, faith is, is a broader concept that we, we really need the whole of Scripture to fully understand faith. And, and even then, we probably still won't fully understand it. But, but this is an interesting place because, again, Scripture is taking this important concept, faith, and is uh, describing it for us very, very particularly, uh, very specifically. And, and the first thing we notice in this verse is that it tells us that faith is assurance or faith can be thought of as conviction. It's assurance. It's conviction. And I think to understand what, what this means, we, we can go actually to a summary of the faith, the summary of our understanding of what Scripture teaches in the Westminster Shorter Catechism with the question about saving faith. And the answer to that question is that saving faith in Jesus Christ, or faith in Jesus Christ, is a saving grace whereby we receive and rest upon him alone for salvation as he is offered to us in the gospel. So in this definition, this is more precisely what we might think of as a definition, um, faith then is a resting and a receiving. It's resting in Christ. It's receiving something from Christ. So as resting, it's, it's not according to our works that we are saved, but ultimately it's according to his works. We rest. We don't work to be saved. We rest in his work, but it's also a receiving. So there is an active portion to it or an activity. Uh, it's a passive activity, if, if that even makes sense, but it is a receiving from him. And so we receive his works. It's not, we were not saved by our works. We're received, we're saved by his works that we receive by faith. But also in this definition, the definition from the Shorter Catechism, it has a, another helpful idea or phrase in it. And that is, it reminds us of what the object or who the object of our faith is, that, 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 Faith is this saving grace whereby we receive and rest upon him alone. So ultimately, it's not Christ's righteousness that we receive. We, we do receive Christ's righteousness. It's not forgiveness that we receive. We receive forgiveness. But ultimately, it is him that we receive. We receive Christ, and in receiving Christ, we receive all of his benefits, all of his blessing. We receive the whole Christ, all that Christ is and all that Christ has done. And so faith, therefore, looks to Jesus and it receives the finished work of Jesus as we receive Jesus. And then it rests in that received finished work of Christ as we receive Christ. And that resting, that receiving then, it provides us with assurance that we are filled with a, with a gospel conviction that if Jesus has promised to save us by grace, through faith, by receiving him and all of his benefits, if Jesus has promised that in the gospel, then when we receive him, then when we grasp hold of him, is another way we like to think of faith, was we grasp hold of him, we are filled with assurance, not because of what we have done, but because of what he has accomplished. 
He has accomplished our salvation. And so as we grasp hold of him, we receive him, we receive all that he is, all that he has done, all that he is for us and all that he has done for us. And we are assured, we are convicted in a good way of our salvation. But this verse, uh, 11.1, also reminds us something about that assurance, something about that conviction. It's an assurance of things hoped for. Now, again, this is not the entirety of what faith is, but the point that the author of Hebrews is seeking to make here is that, that faith looks forward, that faith receives something now as a, as a down payment, but the fullness of what is promised is not received now, it's received later. It's the assurance of things that are hoped for, and we hope on the basis of the promise. And it's a conviction of things that are not seen, or at least not yet seen, because we have the promise, not the reality. We have the hope, not the reception of that promise. So remember that in Scripture, contrary to the popular saying, the popular way of thinking, scripturally, seeing is not believing, right? Seeing is seeing and believing is believing. And those two things are entirely distinct, entirely different. In fact, they are connected to each other because faith or believing becomes sight in the presence of Christ Jesus. But those are two very separate things. One is seeing and one is believing. So we do not see or rather we do not believe, sorry, we do not believe because we see Jesus now face to face, because we can touch the wounds in his side or, you know, uh, or anything of that nature. We, we believe because the promise that is in the word of God. We believe because we read God's word, we read the gospel, and we are convicted by the power of the spirit working in us that these words, these things are true. We do not have the fullness of those things, Right? We're like Abraham as he walks the length and the breadth of the promised land. And not surprisingly, Abraham is an example that the author of Hebrews is going to use of this kind of faith. But, but we walk the, the length and the breadth of the promised land. We see it, but it's not ours yet. It, it doesn't belong to Abraham yet. It belongs ultimately to him in the fullness of time as uh, he passes into glory. It's only then that the fullness of that promise is his. And the same way with us. We, don't, we, we, we taste it, we see it uh, in a limited sense, but we don't fully receive it until either Christ returns or we go to be with him. We see it, but not with our natural eyes. We see it with the eyes of faith. We trust, we believe, and we believe because of that promise. But it's also important to remember that the object of our faith is not the promise itself. The object of our faith is the one who makes the promises. We cling to the promise, but we cling to the promise because it's both the promise from Christ and it's the promise about Christ. Ultimately, through that promise, we are reaching not for a promise. We're reaching for a person. We're reaching for Jesus. He is the object of our faith. And therefore, we see that the power of our faith is not in us. It's not even in our, really in our understanding of the promise itself. The, the power of faith is in the object that it grasps hold of. That's why even a little faith is able to save as long as it is faith in Jesus Christ. That's also why faith in some other Christ or some any other thing cannot save because it doesn't grasp hold of Christ as he is offered in the gospel, which for that, see the book of Galatians and, and other things, right? Uh, this idea that we need Christ, not some other gospel, not some other Jesus. We need the Jesus of the word, the Jesus of the Bible, I also want us to think just briefly, or maybe close with this, what Peter says, 1 Peter 1, 8 through 9. 
uh, Peter says to those to whom he writes, though you have not seen him, that's Jesus, though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. And so my prayer for us today is that we would cling to Jesus Christ by faith. We who have not seen him face to face, that we by his grace and power and mercy and love, we would be assured, we would be convinced that our salvation is in Christ Jesus and that we, because we have trusted in Christ Jesus, we will obtain the outcome of our faith the salvation of our souls. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this reminder here in the book of Hebrews of what faith is, an assurance of the things that you have promised in your word, a conviction even of things that we do now not see. But Father, we pray today that as we cling to your son Jesus Christ through the promises that you have made in your word concerning him, concerning us, concerning our salvation. We pray that you would fill us with that conviction, that you would fill us with that assurance that we would know for certain that we are your children, that you love us, and that you are preparing for us this eternal weight of glory that is ours, is our inheritance in Jesus Christ our Lord. We pray all of these things in his name. Amen. Well, God bless you. Uh, we'll look forward to coming back again on Wednesday, or Thursday. Uh, Pastor Richmond will be talking tomorrow and Friday. And then also remember that we are doing, we, we did last week, we'll do it again this week, a Skype prayer meeting. So if you're interested in the Skype prayer meeting, uh, you can contact me um, either through Facebook. You can leave a comment here on this this. Uh, post, or if you like, you can uh, call me, email me, however however you need to reach me, uh, so that you can be part of that Skype prayer meeting. Um, God bless you, and uh, hope to see you and talk to you face-to-face uh, soon, as soon as possible.